No, I'll be okay. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I really can't. So this is what we need to walk down here. We don't know how we're Cheska and Ben, and we've spent the last five months taking our camper van Sophia on the ultimate road trip around Turkey. Last week, we got to witness the otherworldly hot air balloons of Cappadocia after a fresh snowfall, a sight we won't forget anytime soon. This week, we say a sad goodbye to our friends Philly and Keely before getting stuck into deep caves, terrifying sinkholes, and a scramble or two. Subscribe and join us for the ride with new videos every Sunday. Leave you this Hi guys, I'm Cheska. <laughs> and this is Ben. Hey, hey losers. <laughs> we know you're gonna miss us so much. We're the best convoy buddies ever. <laughs> you know, make sure everyone comes and subscribes to our channel. <laughs> you idiot. We love you guys. We love you so much. <laughs> Bye! Hey! <laughs> Oh, I honestly love them so much. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I always thought dogs were like too much hassle, but these two have totally like melted my heart. Who's gonna sit on my knee like every night? <laughs> Kili, you're gonna have to pretend to be River. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a different video, guys. <laughs> oh, hello. I feel like they know. They know. Yeah. River knows, she's gone all quiet. Oh. Goodbye, River. We'll see you soon. I can't believe the road trip is over. Right. Keely gave me a little macaroni heart that she made. <laughs> it's made me cry. <laughs> Let's not hang around then. Let's go on the road. You're going to be crying. No, I'll be okay. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. 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 Bye. Bye. Love you. <laughs> See you soon, guys. Bye. Love you. Love you. Love you. Bye. As I was saying, Keely gave us a little macaroni heart that she made. Which just set me off. <laughs> We've had literally the best couple of weeks with those two. Made friends for life, and we wish we could have convoyed for longer with them, but our schedules just haven't aligned, unfortunately. If you ha haven't subscribed to them already, I highly, highly recommend you go subscribe to their channel. They make amazing vlogs, and you can go and see what we've been up to from their perspective. I'll put the link to their YouTube channel down in the description below. And for now, we're leaving the snows of Cappadocia behind, and we are heading south, due south to the coast where the temperatures look considerably warmer. They are 18 degrees. About right. 18 degrees, it's like tropical. We drove due south to reach the coastal city of Mersin. In only three hours, the temperature changed from minus eight in Cappadocia to 17 degrees. So you might be wondering what the hell are you doing on the south coast of Turkey? You're meant to be heading back into Europe up the west coast. And that is true. But before we leave Turkey, we have one last thing to do regarding Scout, and that is pick up his blood test certificate all the way from Feti, which is right on the southwest coast. The results from this blood test can take about six weeks to come through. So rather than hang around Feti for almost two months when there's obviously so much more to see, what we originally were gonna do was go up the west coast, see all the things we wanted to see on the west coast, and then when we get the call that the certificate is ready, we're just gonna make one big drive back to Feti and one big drive back up direct and just get the certificate and then probably leave Turkey. But obviously, halfway up the west coast, we decided to go to Cappadocia and cut back on ourselves by 11 hours, which has actually given us the opportunity to now drop back down to the south coast and see all of the eastern south coast that we missed back at the end of last year. When we were last down this way, we ended up missing all of this south coast because we had to get a scout to a vet as soon as possible to get the ball rolling on his vaccinations. And there is so much along here that we had planned to see that we didn't get to see. So now what we are gonna do is we are gonna start from Mersin and we are gonna make our way west and back along to Fetier, where we can hopefully pick up the rabies certificate and then we will head north and leave Turkey. So when we were in the shop mall a few weeks back, I treated myself to da, 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 a brand new, oh, brand new juicer. Much better than that little plastic thing. I was like, oh, this. Now this is the Juicer 4000. <laughs> can juice 40 oranges an hour. But what can you juice? At four. Oh, 
How's my squeezing? Oh my gosh, they're amazing. Are they? Tastes like liquid sunshine. <gasps> that is one of the best glasses of orange juice I've ever had. I can't remember the last time we just sat at the beach and it was warm. This is absolutely amazing. We are parked up right next to this beautiful like ruined castle. So I'm gonna head off for a run. I'm all fueled up with my fresh orange juice lovingly made. You're welcome. And I'm um, gonna take your skate for a walk. Me and River are gonna go for a little run and a little explore. We'll take you along with us. This is a Byzantine or Byzantine palace destroyed in the 5th century and abandoned in the 7th century AD. Whoa, look at this place. Oh, you can just see Sophia just there. It is gorgeous. Wow. I think we can run up here, so we're going to go up there. You can see the ruins stretch all the way over there and across the road to the amphitheatre. Wow! How many places in the world can you come for a run and stumble upon Byzantine Temple? Hey, this is why I love Turkey. I'm surrounded by the white stones of this amazing castle that just stretch on in every direction. And then I've got Ben and Scout down on the beach behind me. The birds are singing. It honestly feels like a summer's day back home. Oh, I've missed the warmth. I'm gonna let River off in a second and she's gonna absolutely sprint to Ben and Scout on the beach. Watch her go. Are you ready? Go, 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 go. like a bat out of hell. <laughs> we spent the evening doing something we haven't done in a long time. We dug out our tables and chairs, poured a glass of wine and watched the sunset, all without our coats on. We weren't the only ones enjoying the fresh air either. Good morning everyone. I thought I'd just show you around this little park up where we're staying at the minute because I think it's going to be our base for the next couple of days because it is just so handy. It's basically this little cove. You can see the sea just behind me here. Completely flat, a lot of hard standing here for vehicles. Lots of space. I'm kind of really surprised that we're the only ones here to be honest. There's been a few fishermen, a few spear fishermen. Nice long sandy beach for the dogs to play on. A lot of space. It is pretty noisy as you've probably been able to hear. There's this big main road that runs right past it. So if road noise does bother you, it probably wouldn't be ideal. There's also a lot of rubbish here, just bagged up under the trees, thrown on the floor. It's a popular picnic spot. And as is often the case in Turkey, picnic spots tend to get full of rubbish. Even when there's lots of bins in Turkey, I just don't understand it. But yeah, so there is a lot of rubbish here. There is a main road, but it's very conveniently located for a lot of things that you want to go and see. There's also no stray dogs here, which is pretty rare. Like normally there's at least one milling around, but there haven't been any. So for us with the pups, it's a pretty perfect spot. Where are we off to today then, Drive? Okay, so we are going to the Caves of Heaven and Hell, the Caves of Ben and Jessica. You can make a decision on which one's which. These caves, apparently there's this huge chasm where Zeus imprisoned the Typhon, a hundred-headed monster. So we're gonna go see what it's all about. It's lovely and quiet. There's a couple of people here. It's 45 TL each to get in. And our first stop is Hell. I really can't. No? <laughs> My legs are <laughs> bracing right now. This is apparently where Zeus imprisoned the Typhon, the hundred-headed monster. Go, hold your hand. One of the reasons, one of the many reasons we love Turkey is just all this ancient mythology and ancient history. Oh my god! No. Is it okay? Look, I just get well done. Well I, done. I get vertigo, so. Okay. Is that literally the floor? But just look. Just take it steady and just like just look over here, and I just let your eyes slowly go. The pit of hell is a giant sinkhole with sheer vertical sides that plummet to 400 foot. 
a glass walkway takes you over the edge and above the chasm, giving you a bird's eye view into this vast hole in the earth. You see why you would imprison a monster in here? It's not getting out, is it? Unless it can fly. It is incredible. It is just this giant, giant sinkhole with just sheer sides all around. We've just climbed down some steps into this huge like canyon and apparently this is where the cave of heaven is down here. So right at the entrance to the cave is this chapel dedicated to St. Mary in the 5th century by somebody called Paulus according to an inscription above the door. This is absolutely incredible to see this beautiful stone chapel with these gorgeous arched windows just overlooking this cave. Hello! You'll never ever ever again have history like this. No. Like history which is, you know, steeped in like speculation and mystery. Like, and history and mystery where you never ever have it again because everything's so documented now and whereas obviously then it wasn't overly documented. Ready? We can go right in. Like, literally right into the cave. Well then, Come after on. you. The river that you can probably hear running behind us is apparently, according to legend, the source of the river Styx, which is where the souls of the dead would be rowed across into the underworld. The hell was, yeah, just a big pit, a big chasm, which I guess, yeah, makes sense that that is hell. You can't escape from it. This is a beautiful, beautiful cave. Wow. There you go. Source of the river Styx, apparently. It's just flowing out from this rock. You see how fast it's going. Ben and I have been caving a few times when we were in Vietnam and this is up there. 100% is up there. Wow. Ben's just taken a photo, that's what it looks like. That's an amazing hey. photo. Just before you leave the cave, or enter the cave, depending on which direction you're coming in, there's an inscription in the wall here in ancient Greek that's meant to date back to 1st or 2nd century AD, and it reads, Before I entered this concave and bush and brushwood, before the lightless flow of a rune river, splashing under the land of Arimini, blind my view, I invoked Pan and Hermes for forgiveness. So it's an invocation to the Greek gods Pan and Hermes. That's incredible. It's just there. Look. Written in ancient Greek. Just carved into the rock. That was incredible. I didn't have, to be honest, massively high hopes. I just thought we were going to see two caves. And when I saw the big visitor centre, I thought, oh, it's all going to be behind the barriers. That cave of heaven was incredible. Absolutely loved it. Couldn't recommend that enough. But after all that walking around, I think we have worked up an appetite. I've scouted out a Turkish breakfast place. It's a three minute drive up this road. Fingers crossed it's open. We've not, we've not had a Turkish breakfast in a good few weeks. We are ready for one. The view here is absolutely breathtaking. What was that noise? Oh, it's a sheep over there. <laughs> This has to be one of the freshest looking breakfasts that we've ever had. Because lemmy, we've got some chips, we've got cheese rolls, there's more olives and chutneys, we've got freshly squeezed orange juice, scrambled egg, we've got so many condiments and chutneys and jams, honey, little cheeses, and the salad looks incredible. Nothing beats a good Turkish breakfast, where you can sit and chat, picking away at a seemingly endless table of delicious food. We're going to miss this when we eventually leave. So I'm not entirely sure what these are. I think they're some sort of like candied fig. So I'm going to try one of these. Wow. That looks like it's going to be sweet. That literally tastes like a fruit pastel, literally. 
It tastes like a green fruit pastel. Oh, I'm going to come try that. Mm, I'd be interested to know if there's a sweet or a savoury person in your relationship because Ben is the sweet one in ours and I'm picking up like all the, sure ch all the chutneys and olives and Ben's picking away all the jams. Mm-hmm. Make a good team. Oh, that was lovely. That was really nice. That was such a lovely breakfast and the views are amazing, the weather's been amazing and yeah, I'll give them fresh flowers. How and it was nice called, what, what was the restaurant called? Um, Zerve. I'll put the link to it in the description as always. When we drove down this way from Cappadocia the other day, we dropped our washing off at a laundrette here in Mersin. We've just driven into Mersin, into the town to come and pick it up. Still feeling a bit of a food coma from that breakfast. <laughs> oh, shake, uh... Okay, so if you're immersed in, these are the guys to come to you to come and get your laundry done. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very so much. Look you. at this, all oh, freshly no. pressed. Yes, yes. Oh, oh you, you take it. Huh? Oh, thank you so much, Attila. Chog <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Bye. One thing we found in Turkey is that it's been all but impossible to find self-service laundromats. We haven't found any. But we did find this laundry service run by these really lovely guys in Mersin. We found it on part for night. They are so, so friendly. When we dropped our clothes off the other day, they invited us for chai and biscuits. We're chatting away. We picked up our clothes today. They are freshly washed, dried, folded, ironed, probably cleaner. The cleanest they've been since the day we bought the clothes. So highly, highly recommend using them. If you're in the Merson area and you're looking for a laundromat, I'll put a pin down in the description to where they are. Loads of parking for your camper van as well. Yeah, amazing service, really recommend it. It was 90 TL per load. So, and that's for everything being washed, dried, ironed, folded, the lot. And, they gave us this little gift of a little plant, it was a little plant pot, which is very kind of them. So thank you very much for that, guys. So glad we got that done. We have been desperate to do laundry for quite a while now. But we're gonna head back to our little park up. Head back to our little, park, to our little park, park up. Hey, good morning, guys. We are in the same spot as we have been. It is another beautiful day but opposite over the main road is a little place that sells Goslemi, Borek, Sigma. So this morning, I'm gonna pop over, I'm gonna test my Turkish, and see if I can order us some Goslemi and see what else they've got. Uh, uh, Goslemi? Uh, Goslemi, yeah. Um, Peynir. Uh, Peynir, beer. Goslemi, uh, beer for it. Oh, Goblin Sicily. What's really nice is that the woman who does all the cooking remembered me from last time. She's uh, saying, uh, caravan, caravan. Over that, uh, yeah, ever, ever, yes, yes. Yeah, which is really nice. Okay, guys, that was a huge success. Oh, let me go off the road. Okay, guys, that was a huge success. Borek, Goslemi. 35 TL, breakfast of champions. I can see a little head. Somebody can hear your voice. Well, hello. <laughs> hello, hello, Scout. Oh, I wish you could smell how good this is. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Either way, it's another beautiful day in Turkey. We've heard that about 10 minute drive from here there's some Roman statues carved into a cliff face. Apparently it's a bit of a hike so I thought we'd go and check it out. Back on the dirt roads. The site is a holy place related to a death cult. So from my research, I had read that it's a little bit of a potentially dangerous scramble down to these statues in the cliff. We're hoping to get as far as we can before it got a little bit like too sketchy. We brought the dogs with us just to see how far we can get and I don't think it's very far before it starts to get pretty steep. It is, we've left the dogs in the van and it is getting pretty vertical so 
We're going to see how far I can go. I'm taking over the filming for the moment. <laughs> but yeah, the dogs are in the van. Max fan is on Max. It's lovely and cool for them, so we don't have to worry about that. And check this out for view. So this is what we need to walk down here. We don't know how much further. And I think they're not far. I think they're just around that bend there. Ah, oh, there we go. Can I just say, Philly and Keely would love this rock. This is some sexy rock climbing rocks. It feels very grippable. Here she comes, the impression of a mountain goat clinging to the face of the cliff. It actually wasn't too bad. I've not got the greatest head for heights. Um, and I was fine. It was just a little bit vertical, just a bit of scrambling. After a steep scramble, we made it to the statues. Carved into the rock face are 13 life-size effigies of the dead, immortalised forever by their grieving families, who are probably part of a Roman death cult. No documentation exists about these carvings, but inscriptions on the rock tell us they were made around the 2nd century AD, almost 2,000 years ago. This is incredible, the best part of 2,000 years old. They're just here. Just like these reliefs carved into the cliff face overlooking this absolutely incredible gorge. Ancient history never ever ceases to amaze me. Like that carved out 1700 years ago, down the sheer rock face and the detail. So I'll show you where the family is. So here you've got the mother and the father. The father was uh, is dressed in um, military outfit and there's a dog, you could just make out the legs standing up with a child sat on her lap. There's like some the inscriptions, which you can still really clearly see. Like if you could read that language, you could read it. Well deserved drink. I can't believe it's so hot today and Cappadocia is three hours away. That is nothing. Well, after that scramble and hike, I think we need a, a nice cool dip. Every evening here, there's been spear fishermen, so we're thinking there might be some like cool like reef out there. So we're gonna get the paddle board out, we're gonna get the snorkel out, and we're gonna go and check it out. The water is so glassy this evening. Right, let's see what we can find. Holy shit! No! No! <laughs> oh, it's just a Bugger all. Do you want to show everyone what it's like? Well, there was no reef to come and snorkel on. I'm not moving. Paddle. Paddle. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. I mean it. Paddle. 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 sunrise i hope you join us next week as we continue our journey west along the south coast of turkey we'll catch you next sunday guys
Bye. <laughs> Can you walk? <laughs> you have to walk like you fuck yourself, babe, because you are shuffling and you look like you've just walked normally. <laughs> Bend your knees as you. <laughs> when you look back, you look stiff as anything. <laughs> So guys, we can see the van from where we're sat and look at what we can see. Right there, River? <laughs>